first of all, I'd like to introduce you to an artist uh, called Paul Hogarth. Now, here we are. And um, I'll explain to you why I'm showing him. Uh, now, Paul Hogarth is an English painter, illustrator, uh, who died just after the turn of this century, not to be confused with William Hogarth, who was also a painter and printmaker and illustrator who, who lived some two, two, two 150 years before and, and probably a more famous English artist than Paul Hogarth. Now, I was very uh, keen on Paul Hogarth's work when I was an art student and um, uh, I was thinking about him when I was doing this, uh, planning this pen and wash um, uh, session for you, and thinking about him in particular in the way that he uh, simplifies the subject matter that he's chosen. Now, all of these are taken from a book of his to do with illustrations uh, from around the Mediterranean. But uh, if you look at any of these, uh, pictures here. Um, you, you, I think, and the few I will show you in a moment, you can see that there's an awful lot that he leaves out. He, he is actually working in all of these in a soft pencil and watercolour, whereas I'll, I'll be working in a pen. Um, but as with uh, all of us, I think, and I would encourage this all the time, that, that you look around, you see what other artists are doing. Uh, you you uh, pick from them everything that you can, uh, turn it to uh, whatever you uh, advantage you want in your own work and move on. All artists have done that. It's called stealing. <laughs> and we're all very good at that. Uh, so th here, here are um, some illustrations. Uh, and I've more or less selected these at random. I have marked them up. Uh, this one here, this is obviously in Greece. Uh, there is so much of this uh, scene that he hasn't painted or drawn at all. There are so many pencil marks uh, and marks that he's made where he's been searching uh, for uh, what he's trying to achieve, which are left in. Um, and so many areas where he has just touched in areas of paint that he thinks will tell the story uh, a little more um, along the lines of less is more, I guess. Uh, the, the, each page is fascinating. This is another Greek scene here. Um, again, so much of it left out. Uh, you only have to put yourself in the position and I'll be showing you some photographs in a moment uh, to uh, um, illustrate this, to, to realize that what he has done here and in any of these pictures is just a small snap, a small selected area and selected within that area of what he's trying to illustrate. There's so much that is left out. And, and I think this is a really useful um, exercise uh, for us as artists when we're thinking about our compositions and thinking about just what it is we're going to focus on. Here, Paul Hogarth has you know, this, ho this whole uh, foreground here um, has, it's just white paper and with one or two little figures illustrated here, uh, by no means all of them painted. He, he's emphasized certain things going on. In this building here, he's, he, he's just dabbed in certain bits of paint where he thinks it's helping to tell the story. So that's Paul Hogarth who died uh, around the turn of the century. And um, uh, if you hadn't heard uh, of him before, I'm, I'm, I'm just very happy to introduce you to him. He, he was a, a great favorite of mine when I was an art student, although I wasn't an illustrator by any means. Uh, he, he was a great favorite of mine. I, I'd like to then, um, home in on uh, some of my own work. I, and this is all leading up to what we're, we're doing today. So um, I'm not claiming to be Paul Hogarth at all, but I, I am conscious, it, this is a, 
uh, a drawing painting that I did in Australia and the Gold Coast uh, nearly um, nearly ten years ago now. Uh, and and here I, I've tried to be selective, um, and I've done a lot of drawing and just decided to put one colour in there, um, I, I, a little bit as the way that uh, Paul Hogarth did. A couple of other. Mike, could you give us the title for Paul Hogarth's book? This is the book here, The Mediterranean Shore, Travels in Lawrence Durrell's Country, Paul Hogarth. It's quite an old book, I think. I've had it for a long time. Um, what have we got here? Now, I'm just homing in on some of my own work before we get going. Here, this was done a year ago or so. Um, I, again, this is working selectively. Um, I, I have only used one colour here. The, all of this is the soluble pen that I drew these trees with, which, which I've just taken some water and a brush and, and painted over like that. So again, just thinking about, let's select something, let's focus in on that and ignore everything else that's going on around because it's probably telling the story of what I want. Now here, uh, let's come in. This is a photograph. This was also done early last year. This is uh, in Queensland in Australia. I was on a camper van trip with my wife. Uh, uh, there's a, a place called Mission Beach. And I'm showing you this photograph because I then sat down and did a drawing. And in fact, I, I'm almost certain I photographed it after I'd done the drawing. But um, so that is, and you can see everything that's going on there. Um, and this is the, let's do that. This is the drawing that I did from there. Very much taken a lot out of it um, and focused in on what I want. And again, just use one small bit of color that um, I thought would help to tell the story about it being on the edge of an ocean here. Um, the drawing, is trying to make the drawing work for itself. There was a, the light, I, I exaggerated the light a little bit, was coming down this way. So in order to get the light coming on these particular uh, palms here, I've, I've made these at the background a little darker, um, just to exaggerate the two. So that's that one. And now going a little more complicated, is this photograph, which I'll show you here. So this is also Mission Beach. It's really, uh, we had some bad weather there, so it's really quite overcast there. Uh, and then here is uh, the sketch that I did. It's one of these concertina books. Here's the sketch that I did on that. So I. I brought in more colours there, but it's very much a drawing uh, that, that I've decided to pop some colours in uh, uh, to, to make it work. More colours than I've put in the other ones I've shown you so far, but that, that's the, the thought process, the decision making that's going on when looking at a scene, what you're going to do to uh, knock it out and write. Now, Uh, the subject matter today, I've got three different photographs. I, I can't remember which, I'm, I'm sure uh, Lewis sent you all of these, or at least these, or, um, but, but I, I think you've, you've got the information, but I, I can also make sure that I leave it up for you. The, the, this is the Corso in Manly, which is a suburb just uh, outside Sydney. It's uh, where my daughter lives, and I've been there many times over the last few years. and. Uh, it, it's uh, a, a wonderful uh, walkway down to Manly Beach, which is um, a, along here. Great surfing uh, area, wonderful beach. And um, 
it, this is number of photographs I took. I, I actually did a drawing, which um, I know Lois sent out to you. I, I, I don't have it here, but I'm, I'm going to do a, take one of the, a separate one and work on something different. Uh, so there's, there's a lot going on here. We've got to decide uh, how we're going to, what we're going to leave out, what we're going to emphasize, um, and uh, also how much color uh, that we might put into this as much as we think we need to tell the story um, on this one. Now, this is uh, another way that this is different. Uh, every, I think every single uh, session that I've done so far, I have split my uh, painting into four steps. Uh, the first one being thinking about the composition and the drawing, and then putting washes down, and then more detail, um, more uh, darker colors and other colors, and then fin finally, uh, with the fourth step, going for detail. Well, <clears throat> I'm not going to be doing that this time because it doesn't lend itself to the way that I'm working, but I'm still going to be uh, pausing and giving you times uh, to catch up. But I'm hoping that the, the sort of information I can impart today, it's still watercolor, it's, it's uh, all encompassing really, anything that involves water is watercolor. Um, but I'm hoping what I'm going to show you today will be of um, some use to you. Mo everything I've shown you so far has been done in sketchbooks. I, I'm going to be working on a sheet of paper uh, here today, uh, not a sketchbook, because I, I, I just felt that it, you, you could see it a little better than I do that. So I will talk about materials, I'll talk about any equipment I'm using, and then I will start to talk about the composition and uh, wh where we're going to go with uh, this particular scene. Okay, now um, the session today was billed as a uh, strong perspective uh, on the Corso, and indeed there is strong pers perspective here, and we're, I'll, I'll, I'll help you with that and help covering that. But to my mind, the really important aspect of today's session is how to simplify. Um, the sketch that I did that Lois sent you what was done standing around here, I think. Um, I remember I didn't have anything to lean on. I was balancing the sketchbook in my hand, drawing um, and, and popping a little bit of color on it. And, and that was it. So I, I I didn't have a lot of time and it wasn't terribly comfortable because uh, I had uh, nothing to lean on. But but that's often a good thing because it just helps you to prioritize what it is that's important in the piece of work that you're setting up to do. So um, I'm going to use, Pretty sure, Lois, I sent this one out. I'm going to use that as my source photograph. I may alter one or two things. I might add different figures in or, or whatever, but that's going to be um, my, my source in this one. So I'll come back to that in just a moment. We're nearly there. A quick word on materials. Let's make sure you can see all that. Um, as I've said, the paper I'm using, this is the same watercolor paper that I've used for everything up until now. Um, uh, it's Sanders Waterford, it is rag content, 300 grams. Uh, this is about um, uh, 14 inches by 11 inches. Um, it's, a, it's actually a sheet of imperial size paper, which I've torn up into four. Uh, and um, uh, and it's a great paper for watercolor. In fact, I'm not going to be putting a lot of watercolor on this, I'm going to be drawing on it mostly. Uh, and I'd be very happy to use either a, a smoother, more cartridge based paper in my sketchbook or indeed any kind of paper really for this because there isn't a lot of watercolor actually going to go down it. So that's the paper. Um, I, uh, I, I've got a, a permanent pen here. Um, I 
I use these a lot. Uh, I also use a, a, a in Indian ink with, in a bottle and a nib. Um, and I like to do that as much as I can. It's a little more tricky, uh, particularly um, if you're standing up as I was here, but the pen is great. And I like to use um, as thick a nib as possible. So this one's a 1 1.2, um, but here's another one, which is a 0.8. I like to use the thicker uh, nibs rather than the, the thinner ones. The point is this is a permanent pen. So once it's down, you add water and you're not going to um, spread the ink around. I, I have pens that do that. And one of those first pictures I showed you with, of the tree with a sign in front of it, was very much using a pen like that. But here, it's just going to be drawing. And, uh, and, and then I'll think about uh, some watercolor. Now, as far as you're concerned when you're working, um, uh, please use the paper whichever way around. If you wanted to turn it and use it portrait, that's absolutely fine. Um, I. I'm using, I'm, I, I'm going to adapt a landscape format for this. I, I know that Bill and Lois prefer the landscape format because in translating that to the internet onto their blogs and Facebook and all that sort of thing, um, it, it comes, it's, it's easier for them to do it. So I, I try wherever possible to, to use landscape, but, but, but if you wish to do it, um, uh, on, on a portrait, that's fine. If you wish to do it in a sketchbook, if you wish to do it on separate um, a type of paper, or if you wish to do it as Paul Hogarth did, using uh, soft pencils, whatever you want to use, um, then th that is fine. You don't feel you have to use the ink. But, but one of the reasons I am showing you the ink is because I want to, um, I want to encourage you to approach a pen and wash subject, uh, not feeling that you have to necessarily, and there's no reason why you shouldn't, but not feeling that you necessarily have to draw it all up in pencil first and then work over it in pen. That's what we're trying not to do uh, uh, with that. So um, the other thing is that I will talk my way through this slowly. I'll begin my drawing. Um, and uh, please get going with yours uh, as soon as you feel that you're happy to do so. There is a bit of drawing involved in this, so I'm going to stop a couple of times to just give everyone an opportunity to catch up or ask any questions uh, before we move on. Okay, now this, this is um, a fairly long-winded preamble I've, I've had it before I actually get going. But I'm, I'm, I still want to talk to you about this subject. Uh, we, we are what is known uh, as contre jour. We are against the light. The light is behind us. And that is why so much of this is uh, silhouetted. The figures, the trees, pretty much a lot of that is silhouetted. It's a very strong light. So it's throwing very strong shadows down onto the ground. And um, if, if you imagine walking down the Corso as following my pen up to this point here, that, that somewhere along there, and you can probably just see the sea there, somewhere along there is the end of the Corso, you cross a road over a pavement and, and, and you're into the sand uh, of um, Manly Beach. So um, this is a shopping precinct down here. It, it is very dramatic, strong perspective. Where I was standing and taking this photograph, my eye level is going to, is somewhere along this line. If I leave my pen here just for the moment. Now, many times when I've been doing these, I have talk to you about perspective, but this is probably the most dramatic perspective. This is very much what we call linear perspective, as opposed to what is often known as atmospheric perspective, which is where things get lighter and bluer 
in the distance and so forth. This has got very strong lines, lines you can see in these wires, lines uh, 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 shown by the, 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 the buildings here and underneath. Now, the, the simple uh, thing on the perspective just to be aware of is that anything with this eye level here, this, this is where my eye level is roughly, anything that that is going away or coming towards me, it doesn't matter which, uh, uh, um, and is above my eye level, is going to be coming down, down, down to my eye level. You see, lots and lots of that here. <laughs> and anything which is below my eye level and which is going away from me, or coming towards me, is going to be coming up to the eye level here, even bits that you can't see. Anything that's horizontally in front of you, like many of these signs, um, uh, is going to be exactly, exactly the same. It's always going to be horizontal. And anything that's vertical, take these palm trees, for instance, is, uh, is always going to be vertical, always going to be vertical. And things that are horizontal are always going to be horizontal. It's only when things are going away from you, as is so dramatically shown here, that it's coming down to your eye level or down to your eye level. So that's, that's the first thing. And as I do my drawing, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it again as um, I'm drawing so that it hopefully that that message is coming across. And, and now, just before I begin, a little tip on drawing. This is, there's a lot going on in this scene here. I mean, where exactly do you start um, with the, this drawing? And also, let's say that you want to get as much of this into your uh, painting or drawing as possible. Uh, how, where and how do you start so that you don't end up finding that you can't fit much of the sky in there, you can't fit the foreground or something like that in. And my suggestion here in terms of drawing is that you look at something that is large at the front of you and, and draw that in and that everything else kind of fits in with it. Now it's a bit tricky to see this one, but let's say, uh, let's say we're gonna put this palm tree here. Um, this one runs its there's an awful lot more of it going on, uh, uh, out of the photograph. And it comes down to about here and there's something going on below it there. Now, if we drew that in, as I will do in just a moment, um, and we get an idea of the size of that, that's gonna help us relate everything else to within it. So if you're wanting to know where you're going to place, uh, the, where, where the Corso displays, if you want to get an idea of where some of these buildings are going to be, or the figures are going to be, everything like that. We'll keep referencing the big thing that you've drawn, relating it to that. And as your drawing progresses, there'll be lots and lots of other things going. So let me make a mark here. Now, I'm, I'm going to draw with a pen. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to draw with it. If you, if you feel more confident and you want to pencil it in and then draw it, or uh, that, that's absolutely fine. There's, uh, but I, one of the things about working uh, with these marks is, is that it's quite nice just to leave some of the marks in. Paul Hogarth left a lot of his pencil marks in because you can kind of see where he was searching for the right mark. So I'm, I'm going to put, I know that this tree here um, is, is over to the left and I know it's, uh, it's got some sort of foliage at the top. So if I if I make a mark there, uh, let's, let's put it there, say, and I'll come down to, say, about there for the bottom of the tree. Now, that, that means that I can have the top of the tree coming out of the picture, and that leaves me some room down here for what's going on below. But importantly, it kind of gives me an idea of how I can relate other things to it. So, for instance, 
if I want to know how much space I want in here into which everything's got to fit, just to get it roughly right, then one of the things I can do is I can take a measurement, which happens to be about the length of my um, uh, pen here, and I can just, well, interestingly enough, it's about the same taking me right to the edge of the page. So see how, if, if that is the measurement here, oh, I need a, let's get a bit of paper. That's, if that roughly is a measurement there, and then I go across to here, I, I know something along here is going to be uh, the edge that I've got here. And so I'm within, Within these here, I'm working, everything else goes on there. It's amazing how just that bit of information is going to be really helpful, just that. So let's, let's see how we can make it work for us to start off with. Where is the line of the end of the Corso? Well, if we, if we base it on this tree, can you see that it's quite low down, about sort of uh, roughly about there, um, roughly about there is the corso, is the end of the corso, because that is roughly that, and that is roughly that. Now, I, I'm not saying that all the way through your drawing, you need to do mathematical, um, make mathematical decisions like that. But if I, if I never took another measurement again, that at least gives me um, a, a, an idea of where we're going to go. Don't forget, you know, I've, I've got space down here to play with. And then I, I, I can, you know, for instance, um, where might this next big tree be here? Mm, okay, well, let's Let's, let's take the measurement of the tree from there to there and measure it from there to there. So it's going to be about that, that long, just a measurement from there to there. there. It's going to be, now what did I say? Now let's do it another way without measurements. Let's just say that the bottom of it is below the line of the end of the corso and it's sort of, about there, it's going to be somewhere along there, the bottom, and that space is what is it? Roughly one, two. It's about two and a half of these. It's something like one, two. It's something, something like that. So there we go. Let's just make a mark there. I, I, I'm now going to just want, want. You can keep doing little measurements like that, but one, once you've got. The, the idea of what's going on here, then let's go you know, the th thinking about if this is the bottom of that tree and that's the bottom of there, then we've got we've got something like that. that that's going to be really useful. It takes us to there. Now I'm making little marks here just to show you my thinking, but it doesn't matter. They're all going to get lost in the drawing. So that's quite useful uh, just to do that and just to set up the drawing with those marks there. I'm, I'm just going to pause for a little bit. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, do. And I know I haven't drawn very much, but I just want you to think about that. And, and on whatever bit of paper you're doing, see if, if that helps you work out where it's going. I know that all of this, that, and I can make it bigger if I want to on either side. I, I might actually add a a bit more here because I want to expand it. Uh, but I know that I can fit that into something like that. Yes? Simply because I took a measurement of something that's big at the front, checked it out with other things, importantly worked out where my eye line is, or the end of the corso in this case. Um, and, and, and then started to work with that. Now, even if I didn't make another measurement and just went ahead and drew it, um, that would be useful. And, and if I were working, um, I'm sure that when I did this, I would have spent 
some time, even if I was doing it just in my head with one or two little marks, I would have done exactly what I've done here, just, just to help me get in what I wanted to get in. It, just, it gives you something to hang your hat on and then go off and make your drawing. Uh, let's have some fun doing some drawings, okay. Um, I, as, as you see, I tend to move around um, with my mark making. Put that in there. Um, uh, this this tree that I drew here is about that difference. Let's just so how how am I going to draw all, all this stuff here? Well, let's again a, a thicker pen is quite useful for that. Let's just it's going to take me something like that. In some ways, the best way of doing this is when you are under a little bit of pressure and you uh, are, are drawing to make things work as best you can. Let's um, let's bring now the, the bottom of this tree has got all sorts of things going on. So, um, right, I'm, I'm having just established. I'm going to I'm going to just spend a little bit of time thinking about these buildings here. Okay, so uh, the line at the bottom of these buildings runs down here and it, it sort of disappears about, about roughly about halfway, sort of disappears about there. So that would be quite useful to have the line of the, uh, another thing I find very useful is I, I just want, want to work out where that line might be. So if I hold my pencil on it and then take it at the same angle to there, that gives me an idea of what it might be. Now, I'll, I, I do this all the time when I'm standing up and drawing. Uh, so the line of the bottom of the buildings is something like that. that that's really useful to know. It's quite good it all sort of disappears. And let's have a look at, uh, the, say, if I, if I get this building in here, then, then I can make the others work in it. This building uh, comes about roughly about halfway up the tree, doesn't it? So it's about here. So it's going to be, it's going to cross the tree about there. And the angle of it is something like that. That'd be quite useful. Um, and they're all different sizes, but that angle is, is quite helpful. And it, it goes beyond that tree a little bit. So I, again, no one's gonna come around with a millboard checking on this, but uh, there we got something. So when you're drawing with these ink pens, you, it, it's no problems really just crossing over. Um, uh, but just be aware that when you are doing this, that all the windows, everything else that's going away from you is going to is going to be follow this rule of being extreme the higher up it is and it gets more and more parallel till it gets to your eye level. So um, even this bit here is above my eye level. And let's put that down about there. So it's 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 not quite such a tight angle, it's something like that. Now, as with a lot of drawing and things like this, it, if, if you get some of it not exactly right to your liking, you can lose so much in, in a drawing like this. Um, so let's just pop in a few windows. I, I, I won't put a, a lot of detail in these windows here, uh, but I am conscious that if, if I can get something of the, and I'm, I might just, Take, take that, that's beyond my photograph. So let's just see what happens there. Just make a few little marks here. There's, a, there's some sort of a, I don't know what this is. It's, it's just a, yeah, protects you from the sun. I think it sticks out a little bit like that. And then there's maybe a couple of other windows here. 
And if you don't get the windows that as they're shown on, on this, that's no worries at all. So I'm coming down to some sort of a balcony here, which sticks quite a way out. Like that. And the balcony sticks out and, and we come in here underneath. Let's not, let's not worry about too much detail, just know we can spin around. I'm, I'm more interested in just establishing the, the feel of... Someone's asking right you there. about the leading edge of the building roof. If that line was extended towards the centre of the drawing, where would it go? It seems to be a different spot than the dot at the well, base of the tree. Uh, well, we're talking there about vanishing points, aren't we? Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, I've kind of deliberately ignored using that word because it's, it's always a, a, a but, but if you, if you follow uh, the lines in, I, I, it, in fact, it's probably over here a bit more, isn't it? Thank you for sharp eyed person. So let's just, it's probably a bit more of a, and this is probably a bit more taking it over here, right? I never said I was perfect. But uh, but just adjust it as you go along. I mean, that's it's good that you're you're observant and you're thinking about things like that. So we now here we are. Just it's quite useful to be aware that all of the buildings that I can see on this side, they all end soon after this tree, about here or so forth, don't they? And it's well, God, we're, we're the, the the top of that building is roughly about here so we got something sort of like that somewhere in there is contained all the the, the buildings that are going on here so uh, uh remember less is more the, the the fewer things you can put in for sharp-eyed people like um whoever just mentioned that to but no you're quite right you, you as you're drawing you're discovering these things and 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 that's quite useful so uh, i'll come back to this i'm i'm going to relate this so so, so i do move around my drawings a lot i'm uh, i haven't put in all the other trees yet but I, i'm going to come here there is a sort of vanishing point somewhere around here and interestingly that's roughly where these um, overhangs are. Now, th this overhang here, th this is an interesting one. Relate it to what we have worked out here. Okay, think about this shape called a negative space as well here. So um, it is going to be, it's going to start somewhere here. Remember, this is roughly the the end of my buildings, although I might just add some more into it. So it's going to start there. And think about the angle of it. It's extreme angle. Look at that. And, and it's very easy when you're drawing something like that, just not to be brave enough to put that angle in. So it's something like going, going something like that. All right. Now it comes down to, and this is where imaginary lines, let's just take that across there it comes down to sort of something about there whoa and you look at it and you think what have I done that doesn't look right and this space here everything else is bunched up in it but that's exactly how it is so let if we put it put that in that's quite good and let's um this comes out a little bit further. There's a little bit of space there. So you've got roughly the idea that this is a little bit complicated here. Let's just put in some few signs that they're going across. It's quite nice to have a few horizontal things after all this dramatic. Okay, there's something going to be going on in there, which are the buildings. Um, let's, let's do something about those now. Uh, there's a lot of horizontals. The bottom line is about there. And uh, 
and and the although we can't see it, the um, the bottom of the buildings is pretty extreme here. So it's something like something like that. Although it's out of sight, it's going to be something like that. So you can see we're getting the drama of the perspective going down like that. And just doing these little lines and drawing them in and adjusting them as you, as you see fit is, is very useful at this stage. Um, and I find, I'm just trying to work out where to draw this. And so it's quite useful to look at that space, that shape, which we call a negative shape. And it sort of gives me an idea that it's going to be something like, it's going to be something like that, something like that. So, and there's a lot of horizontals, which uh, don't change. And, and as an artist, when you're drawing this, you, you, you can get terribly confused with all of these things. Let's not get too bogged down. At the moment, a few signs will be quite useful here. Body, the body sign. Yes, I'll bring that down a bit lower, I think. The body sign here. And then there's um, we've got windows, haven't we? Reflections. That might be quite nice to put some color in there a little bit. Let's just bear that in mind. A little bit of color in there, another sign. So, yeah, you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. Um, I, I, I think I'll suggest the shadow a little bit. I don't want to get too bogged down with that. So this shadow comes down something like that. I don't want to, it's just something like that, that shadow. And then it is a sort of gap, the shadows and Something like that. Now I hope you can see in my drawing that um, I'm saying things about this drama of the um, perspective, although I haven't um, I, I haven't put a lot of it in. I haven't put the trees in. I, I'm going to put the trees in, but uh, okay, let's. Um, Let's, I've established something about these buildings. Yeah, that, that'll be fine. So I, I think I'll do something on some of these trees. Now there's a very prominent tree here, which is the space between that and that is that that's small and that's greater. So if I if, if I put it about here and it comes down almost to the level of this one so let's just let's just pop and it takes itself almost out of the picture so that that can go up like that when you're drawing lines uh you may well have heard this expression um lost and found and uh, quite often uh, the you don't need to draw every line as if it's a precise line you you might let's, let's just put this little tree in here you might just sort of make a few little marks losing it and finding it again a little later on okay that's uh, that's going to be that that tree is going to be something like this that little palm tree uh, this one I think I'll make a bit thicker I, uh, this is where I like working with uh, a nib and ink, and sometimes uh, I, I I work uh, with just um, not just a nib, but let's see if I've got one here. I often work with. Come on, oh here, oh, no, that's my pen. Somewhere I've got it. Uh, a stick. I find, which I don't happen to have with me, uh, that, that's, the, that's the nib that I often use. Um, come on, I must have a stick in here somewhere. Yep, not in that one. Uh, 
but a stick or or even just the other end of a paintbrush which maybe i've 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 cut a little bit um, and then dip that in and you can get some really nice marks with that so let's start putting in uh information here but we've got so i'm gonna spend a little bit of time uh on the trees now Uh, there is a sort of perspective going down here, so let's see if we can. But it, it's interesting that the trees all end somewhere about here. It's in, in there, and the height of them is it's sort of like that. And we, we, we've kind of got a perspective that runs a bit like that. It's not precise. But that, but but it's useful to make a few of the remarks. We've got some trees in here. And there's I don't know. There's all sorts of gubbins going out the end there. It's right on the edge of the um, Manly Beach, so there's interesting things going on there. Let's put a few trees up here. I, and um, yeah, I quite like some of these banners that are flying here. So let's. Um, you put them in where you like, so it's, it's sort of something like that. And even they've got a form of perspective, haven't they? So there's another one down here, something like that. And then we've got the wires, I'll pop, pop those in. So you can have hours of fun, aren't you? Just drawing all these trees and putting them in. They don't all go to, to regulate tree to, to uh, the same heights to fit in with perspective. But pretty much gives the, the effects of um, now all the time you're doing this drawing you're 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 making decisions as to you know what am I going to put in what am I going to leave out um, how much of this do I need to darken um, maybe I can come in later on with paint and do that or um, I think I need to put something more about these trees. It's quite nice how these trees, uh, the foliage, uh, the, the banners here, block out some of the foliage, don't they? That's, that's quite interesting. I don't know how many of you listening have been to Manly, and uh, but my daughter, who lives just up from this beach, is thinking of coming back to England. I, I, I do sometimes wonder why, uh, but her husband's got his business back here, but it's a wonderful life um, out there for a family. And we've had some great holidays. I know this this course so very well. All right, let's, um, let's pop in. I, I think I'll do something in the foreground now because uh, I'm getting a feel for the, the direction my picture's going in. So let's, um, what be useful is to pop in a couple of figures. Here again, reference points are quite useful. Let, let's, let's, Let's put a couple of figures here and we look at these two figures because they're quite prominent. Um, now, how to, how to position them so they look roughly uh, in proportion to what everything else has got in. Well, I, I find quite useful is to think about how much distance is taken up from, from top to toe and relate that to something else that's happening here. So, uh, that's about here. So if, if I put this lady's head here, how much room above her head? Maybe she wants to go a bit higher. Can, can I see of the end of the corso? So if we go, if we go say about there, that, that might be the top of her head and we'll come down to say, the figure's gonna take that, that sort of space. 
All right. When you're drawing your figures, again, if you if you if this worries you and you think mm, I'm not sure about doing this in pen or anything, just go ahead and do anything you're concerned about in pencil and and see how it looks. But I'll 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 uh, do it in pen. So that the thing about the figures is that there is a sort of body movement, body action, and the heads are not as big as you think they are. So a little bit of head, and if we can, she, she's swiveled. She's sort of turning around a little bit. She's got an arm going off like that, an arm coming down here, and and her a leg doing this. The, the, the bulk of the figure is in the torso and something like that. And don't 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 go too blocky with the legs. So just some sort of oh, just really leaning back there. Never mind. Um, and that, that's quite nice to have another figure because we can relate that one. Let's put this one not dissimilar. Also walking. Uh, she may be just a little further away. Um, and, and uh, she's got some sort of pack on her back. Yeah, we can do that. And and her legs are something like that. A couple of little figures popped in there. Mm, uh, well, let's have a look. Okay, they, they've got some interesting shadows. Now, in every other painting I've ever done, with you on these demonstrations, I, I, I paint. I've got shadow colors, and I've used the shadows and done all that. But, but in this one, it's so much more about drawing, and then selective drawing at that, and then selective colors. So, uh, I'm doing it with, yeah. Uh, right, I'm going to put this figure in here, which I now realize could well be my daughter. So she's bigger. She's up closer. Um, and she's bending over a little child. So if I draw her in relationship to the other two figures and do an imaginary line, she's going to, her head's going to be somewhere there, but her feet are going to be quite a way down here. So it's, she's going to be bigger than that. She's going to be something like that size. Let's see how that works. She's um, it's there, she's sort of bending down. I might need to make her a bit bigger. She's bending down, she's with a baby or a little boy. Let's just see. And she's doing something with a little lad down here. Let's put him in. He's, his legs are like, so, yeah. So there we are, is she big enough? Maybe let's, um, And there's some strong shadows coming from them. Hmm, okay, I could have made her a bit bigger, maybe. Let's not worry about that. Okay. Um, I think the next thing I'll do is pop in some information around here. Something a bit more on these buildings here. And then I pop in what's going on here. What, what, one of the um, quite useful things to do when you're looking at something, particularly with this uh, um, chiaroscura, is, uh, is that a good enough pronunciation, Lewis? I, I don't know. Uh, that this against the light, light and dark. Chiaroscura. Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> is is th there are little things which are quite handy. For instance, if you look at this balcony here that I'm pointing out and how it projects away from the building, uh, a, a way of making that, um, exaggerating that a little bit, is to just be aware of the darkness uh, that, that is around it. And that in turn, can you see that in turn is making that stand out. I often find I'll draw something and if I need to come back and make more of it later on, I, I will do so um, there. So um, a couple of little things on um, uh, some sort of a rubbish 
bin or something, or is it a electricity uh, something? Even even that's slightly going away from the from you the angle. Um, can you see this figure, my daughter here? You can see how the light is shining on uh, on that side of her body coming down from this way. Well, uh, I I can I've, I've drawn it in a little bit, but I could sort of exaggerate that by making that darker around her and trying to trying to do something so that it's, I'm, I'm just making it a bit bigger so 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 that she stands out a little bit from that uh, right let's have a look I, I'm, I'm I'm not going to get too excited about exactly what's going on here. Let's, but uh, there is a figure. Let's put this figure in. Okay, he's sitting down. I think he's sitting down. So going to do something with this building here. Where did I say it ended? About here, wasn't it? Yeah. So let's put a few suggestions of uh, windows, light catching little areas of building. I think I'll continue with this shadow down here, down to more or less the base. And there's a lot of underneath. So I'm using the edge of my uh, pen here. I mean, every other demonstration I've done, I would have done this with a paintbrush, but I'm just doing that here. Um, the light's coming down from this side, so I can afford to maybe make the shadows a bit stronger on this side of the windows. Underneath here. Now, if you're doing a drawing, you might decide that um, you're going to use some paint in here. But I'm deliberately doing this demonstration where I'm going to use the very minimum of paint just to tell the story. Okay, what's going on here? I think I can put another tree in. Yeah, I can put another tree in here, I think. So let's have a... Let's have a this doesn't exist, this tree. I'm just decided to put it in. Largely because I want to try and make this a landscape <laughs> drawing to satisfy my masters. Right. Um, my, my pen's ink's running out here. Actually, if you're drawing, um, uh, the, the ink seems to get absorbed more on this watercolor paper than um, than on a smoother paper. So maybe it's a good idea to use a, um, a smoother paper, but I do like, let me have a little pause here and show you something. I do like to use, um, come here, come with me, where are you? Yeah, here we are. <clears throat> I do like to use uh, and find it the fastest way of working uh, a pen which is not permanent, which is 
as this one is, which is soluble. <clears throat> I, and that, that means that I could draw this in as I've drawn it in with um, the soluble pen. And I, I just need to, I could do it with my finger if I wanted to, a little bit of water. I just take a brush down and I've instantly made that darker. I, I've deliberately not done that. Uh, on, on this occasion, I'm deliberately sticking just to um, uh, using a permanent pen. But the, the, the two I find really useful. I always carry both with me. This soluble one, um, which gave me this sort of a picture. Remember I showed you? Um, yeah, gave me, I was able to very quickly draw this. I was just having a cup of coffee, I remember at the time. and. Uh, I, I parked up the motor caravan, saw this tree with a sign in front of it, drew it, splashed in the water and, and instantly got this, this painting sort of coming out in front of you. And, and in fact, this one as well, these, these were a couple of cassowary birds, which um, wonderfully uh, appeared where we were staying. And uh, they're, they're quite rare to see them. Um, yeah, quite rare. There's another, another one with a permanent pen and just a bit of um, colour put in there. But but th these are great. But but of course, what it does mean is that you just have to be a little bit careful because if you want to start bringing paint, colour in, and so forth, uh, uh, and you touch any of these marks, <laughs> of course, it will it will shoot out and uh, and and bleed out, which in a way you may or may not want it. So you have a choice there. Let's just see. Now we are um, an hour and a quarter, Lois, so we're doing really well in here. Uh, I think I need to just uh, try and get this sorted out in the next 20 minutes or so, and, and the drawing, and then just finish off with uh, some big painting. Now we've, we've got these, um, uh, roofs, uh, overhangs, there's sort of sun roofs or something here, aren't they? And they, they're they exposing more and more light as you go along. Well, can I be asked to measure them exactly? No, I don't think so. So let's just um, give an idea. We've got something like, that's that one, something like that. And we just get an idea that they're getting to, sort of smaller, make that a bit as, as they go along. That sort of thing. Again, you don't need to put every last bit of information in if you don't want to. Let's just... Uh, I used this expression at the start when I was talking about Paul Hogarth and illustrating and so forth. Uh, I used the expression which was um, doing enough to tell the story. I have no idea where I got that expression from, but thinking about it, quite a good one, really. Um, so let's just do enough to tell the story. It gets a little more dark. And, and this is all very dark here, so let's... Um, try and tell the story as quickly as possible. I, I quite like the, um, the reflections here. I mentioned that before. So wh whether, whether I, I will make use of that, I, I don't know. Let's see. Maybe that's enough just to tell the story, what's going on here. I, if you think about Paul Hogarth's work and just how much he left out, you know, just how much he decided not just not to, to draw. Let's have a, whilst we're just taking a break, let's have a look at some other. I mean, this enormous big panorama here uh, and um, of uh, urban scenes and, He's left so much out, he's just emphasized certain little bits of it, <laughs> pyramids. Um, well, he's done a lot of painting there, I must say. Uh, that's unusual. Um, whoa, look about that one. 
<laughs> just really emphasize that. So don't feel you'd have to paint everything in by any means. I must tell I must keep telling myself that. Let's um uh let's just a suggestion of the shadows here and I leave a few little gaps here that might be quite good, just in case I want to. And of course, the, the, the light here is emphasized by making this all a little bit darker. I, I'm not achieving making it quite as dark as I wanted at the moment, but I'm, I'm conscious that I want to try and get this drawing done uh, in uh, time to complete it in this session. So we've got something happening here. And I, I Lord knows what's going on here. It's, I don't know what's going on there. This might be one of these drawings where you you go away and come back tomorrow and you think, oh, I'll just I'll just add a little bit. I'll just make that a little bit darker there so that this stands out and put in a few, make that a bit darker as it goes away. Or, or you can do that sort of thing a bit later on. I, I, I need some more trees, I think, because I, I, I feel coming out from, let's put a couple more signs in here. And uh, I don't think it's quite busy enough down this end. Mm, what's happening with this building? Um, I got some interesting wires going on here. They're sort of uh, holding, I think, oh, they're, they're obviously holding up some of these, um, uh, what's it, they go all the way down here. Don't forget the perspective, they're sort of holding up more signs. Oh, posters down there. There's obviously some sort of surfing competition going on. They have a lot of those. Wonderful, and a few little, lines here. thrown in amongst all of these are quite a lot of um, uh, posts which are probably have lights at the top of them because it's not sunny the whole time in Australia and um, and we've got shadows coming from a lot of these posts let's not forget that which we see increasingly yeah, and uh, uh, I'm not going to get bogged down in all these pavements, but I just want to, I just want to mess it up a little bit in the foreground, anyway. And we've reached the stage in the drawing, if we haven't already done so, where you're, you're, you're looking at it and seeing, now what, what more do I need to do um, to make it work? To tell the story, to make it work, if you like. Have I, have I done enough? Uh, 
I think I'll leave these signs white. But done enough. These trees get full of parakeets, parrots in the evenings. They all come, come in, making a terrific racket. Um, in the evening, settling down for the night. See if I need to exaggerate anything. Just that side of the building, maybe underneath the building a bit. Yeah. Uh, something here. A lot of this stuff is student accommodation. You see, you usually see all that swingy gear hanging out as the um the holidays progress yeah it's a wonderful place right and i was telling my granddaughter who i'm staying with at the moment that uh, uh, the the grandchildren we have here particularly the older two they love, just down the end of the Corso here, there's a place called the Yogurt Bar. Whoa, that is something, they love that. And um, you, you, um, you, you fill up your bowl with yogurt and you go along and fill up with nuts, fruits, all sorts of things. So it's meant to be a sort of healthy thing. Um, and then you hand your bowl in at the end and they weigh it and they, they charge you by the, the weight of it. I really love that. Right, let's put a few what might be figures down here so, so they're not completely. Uh, these are just slightly darker marks. Makes it look as if there's some people around, which there are. Right, where have we got to? We're heading for an hour and a half, Lewis. Um, you can see how using a soluble pen um, here and just a little bit of water and you've instantly created uh, the, the tonal values that you want. I'm having to work rather hard at it with this with this pen. You know, although it's a brand new pen, I went and got it a couple of days ago, it seems to be running out already. Um, but it's, it's getting a bit of use though, uh, which is what it's there for. Now we've got a nice division between the light underneath. Uh, the buildings and there we got that nice line running there. We've got suggestions of it going here. I've got a feeling this could be darker. Let's just make some of this darker up in the foreground here. Really strong perspective we've, we've had here. All right, let's have a look at that. What new? I, I think I think if I was standing in the course of drawing this, my arms would be aching by now, um, and uh, I'd be wanting to finish this off and go and get a coffee or go and get a yogurt down at the yogurt bar or do something like that. That's um, yeah, I'm just thinking, Paul Hogarth. Let's 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 leave, let's leave lots of it. Uh, I'll, I'll make this a bit darker, I think. Yeah. 
this um, palm tree. But uh, I do feel that my ink is running out. Now you might think, oh, I know the solution. I'm gonna put a little bit of watercolor on that. Well, you may well be right, but I'm not going to. Um, but feel free, please do. And, and do send your finished drawings and paintings in. You know, um, it, it's so interesting for everybody else. I know it is. I'd certainly like to see them and to see what people have uh, um, achieved with that. Anything else I want to do? Let's, um, let's have a, something a bit boxy here. So it's, there we go. I think, I think that's me. Lois? I'm um, I'm abandoning it. Whether it's finished or not, I don't know. But I'm abandoning it. Uh, but uh, and I'm just going to give everyone a bit of a chance to catch up, and then I'm going to do the wa the wash bit, which won't take long with this, uh, unless I, I I'm tempted to put some red there, uh, and I'm tempted. To put a splash of blue there and I'm tempted to put some blue in for the sky. Um, will I put something there? Um, I don't I, I just like the idea of this being red. If, if I do that, there we are, then it's not going to be too bright a red because it will have to work itself over that. Yeah, that, that's, I'll, I'll try that and see how it goes. Hope for the best. is the some of the light area now i'm very tempted to put some shadows in and, and so forth but i'm not going to um please feel free to do that yourself i'm i set out to do a demonstration drawing for here for you using the minimum amount of wash uh um and making it mostly a drawing but but still a pen and wash uh, so i'm not going to be deflected from that even if I think I ought to be. Uh, let's pop in some, uh, it's, it's a great blue in here, great blue sky. So I, I'll, I, I think I need to say something about that blue and I will use um, uh, my, my color palette here, which I haven't really had to explain to you because I'm just not using it at all. It's the same palette that I always use for these um, uh, uh, online uh, sessions and is also, been sent to you by Lois, uh, annotated with the colours. Um, so as far as the blues are concerned, I'll, I'll just deal with those, I think. Uh, I've got three blues, which are cerulean, which is um, quite opaque, um, cobalt, which is semi-opaque, and, and ultramarine, which is um, translucent. But uh, I, I tend to keep as many colours in here as transparent as possible but uh not all don't succeed with all of them so i think i'm going to um normally when you you've got hot skies and everything i i, I i'm tempted i'm tempted to go to the ultramarine blue because it's got red in it and it's a warmer blue but i'm not going to do that. i'm going to go to cobalt i think the cerulean's a bit cool so i'll go to cobalt i can always change it later on if i want to so let's just uh pop this in this will be the quickest bit of painting I think I've done on any of these classes. And um, uh, let's just pop that in here. Uh, oh, I've gone over the building. Uh, never mind. There we are. There you don't. Again, if you look, think about Paul Hogarth, he probably didn't. Um, I, I'm not. I'm not going to put it uh, over that, although the lights coming through. So we've got some. There, yeah, that's my sky. Uh, should I put something here? Yeah, just a little smudge. I've been, I've been threatening to do that all the time. Yeah. 
And um, now, any other colours? Yeah, I'm tempted to put a red in here. Uh, no, all right, let's talk about my reds. I've got two reds. I have a Windsor red, which is the orangey red that I have uh, here, and then I have a crimson, which is the purpley sort of red. So I, I let this. I'll, I'll try this um, crimson. I, I can add some crimson to it. In a way, I was going to put something just there, just a little splash of that. And um, I don't know about this one. Uh, I've got some sap green here. It's a sort of convenient green. Let's just put a little bit there. Yeah, that's as much as I'm going to put in. Uh, and that is that. That's taken me to the conclusion now of this pen and wash uh, drawing uh, um, and that's fine. I actually I, I have to say that I think if I were doing this again I would go for a smoother paper um, uh, ju just like the, the, the paper in all my sketchbooks although it is watercolor paper it's not as absorbent as this and um, let me just give you an idea. It, it, here we are, here's some, some work I've done before. Um, this is with, with a pen and bringing in colour, but it's a, it's a less absorbent, although it is absorbent, uh, type of paper. And, um, and I find, thinking about it, that the pen, um, you, you don't seem to be using up so much ink. Uh, the, uh, I mentioned before the ink seems to be absorbed from the pen into there and I, I think with a slightly more shiny paper, um, yeah, going back to this picture that I've done here, sort of little pictures like that, I, I, I think the, um, I, I seem to get uh, it a bit blacker than, uh, than I do and you know, here's another drawing of a lady uh, on the train to Aula last year when I came to see you, Lois, um, sitting there and, and yeah, I think if I were doing this again and um, I, I, I might go for a less absorbent paper. I love the absorbent paper, it's great for um, watercolours, but no, maybe, maybe these pens just get soaked up too much. However, that's where we've got to on this. Um, a pen and wash drawing. I do hope that uh, the, my talk into the subject, of looking at Paul Hogarth, looking at some of my work, thinking about how you simplify things, how you select what you want to emphasize um, and focus on, um, uh, will have been useful to you in understanding a little bit more about uh, pen and wash and also um, the materials that I've used and various chatter we've had about the, the paper and the pens and the inks and 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 a little bit about the watercolour has helped has again helped there.